Hello people, in this video we want to look at ASOM that is otitis media OM otitis media that AS that is acute suppurative otitis media okay so uh, otitis is what inflammation of the ear which part of the ear the middle ear is inflamed with some bacteria uh, uh, probably that is why there is suppuration purulent right and acute it is an acute condition it's a sudden condition right so we have already in the previous video looked at disorders of middle ear in which we have seen that there is acute condition under which you have acute suppurative otitis media and lot of other conditions and then you have the chronic conditions under which you have chronic otitis media chronic suppurative otitis media etc so currently what are we looking at acute suppurative otitis media okay it's an acute condition of the middle ear so uh, it is caused by streptococcus pneumoniae hemophilus influenzae moraxella catar halis right mainly you have to remember these three and you will treat it with what antibiotics like ampicillin amoxicillin so this is what we want to look at in little more detail so where is the middle ear here you have your middle ear right let us look at uh, what is happening to it here you have your eustachian tube also so how did the bacteria come what exactly uh, uh, happens here and uh, what are the stages how to treat all that we will look at in this video so ASOM is the acute inflammation of the middle ear by pyogenic organisms. Here middle ear means what and all they are referring to middle ear cleft that is eustachian tube middle ear itself plus the eustachian tube attic aditus antrum and mastoid itself everything is included. Where is your uh, all this? So here you have your eustachian tube so that is also included in our whole study. When they are saying middle ear they are actually meaning the middle ear right the eustachian tube the attic the antrum the mastoid everything so when you are seeing this is your middle ear right they have marked here middle ear right that is the middle ear this is the eustachian tube here you have attic aditus antrum this is your mastoid air cells right so all this if it is included you can say all this can be involved okay so this will if this is involved it is called as what mastoiditis However, here they are talking about everything, okay. Mainly, this is a condition that you see in infants and children, okay. So, you know, because their eustachian tube has some specific anatomy, etc., they can easily get uh, affected. Also, that these people can get viral infection and that can lead to secondary inf uh, bacterial infection, okay. Did you understand, guys? Viral, but soon the pyogenic organisms will invade the middle ear. So, how will the bacteria reach there? So, that is what you have to know. So, it can come via the eustachian tube, right? It can come via the eustachian tube. It come, can come via the external ear also. And it can come via blood which is very rare. Now, how did it cross the tympanic membrane? See, there should be perforation of tympanic membrane. Then only it can come via the external ear. Okay, oh, eustachian tube, how does it come, guys? See, eustachian tube, what happens is, uh, in children, you saw the eustachian tube, it is more short it is wide more wide so it can allow more bacteria and it's more horizontal so the infection can reach the middle ear in children okay then this uh, children what they do they also are uh, breastfed uh, or bottle fed in supine position in horizontal position and then you should actually make them prop their head uh, a little higher so that uh, the uh, milk doesn't enter the middle uh, ear right so all that you should take care otherwise then what will happen these people will have this uh, ear infections swimming and diving also they can have they can force the water uh, through the tube into the middle ear through eustachian tube okay in none of these cases there is perforation of tympanic membrane though they are going swimming and all from the eustachian tube the water is entering the uh, middle ear okay we are done with this part then coming via external ear perforations of tympanic membrane we told you from tympanic membrane it is coming like this okay then blood bone sun common so you understood how the bacteria reaches right how the bacteria reaches the middle ear you have understood now there are some predisposing factors okay what are the predisposing factors first of all the bacteria should have been there in the nasal cavity pharynx right so you can think of this tonsils adenoids infection of tonsils adenoids chronic rhinitis sinusitis if these people have nasal allergy if these people have right so think this is your nose and here is the ear and somehow this bacteria has to go from the uh, nose to the ear, middle ear. So, what and all should be there here? Infection of tonsils, 
infection of adenoids, uh, chronic rhinitis, chronic sinusitis, nasal allergy, tumors of nasopharynx, packing of nose or nasopharynx for epistaxis, you would have packed it. Nice bacteria will grow there and go to middle ear. Cleft palate, these people may have or they can have recurrent attacks of common cold, upper respiratory tract infection, exanthematous fever like measles or diphtheria or woofing cough. So, they can have diphtheria, pertussis, measles, everything. So, basically from where did the bacteria come tell? This much is the predisposing factor. Okay. Did you get it guys? So, they should have some nasal allergy, sinusitis, rhinitis, tumor in the nasopharynx, adenoids infection, tonsil infection, some infection viral, something predisposing bacteria grew there. Now, from the eustachian tube, it went to the middle ear. What are these bacteria? Which are these bacteria? Streptococcus pneumonia. Remember the streptococcus? Streptococcus pneumonia. Hemophilus influenzae. This, uh, Hemophilus influenzae is not a virus, though it says influenzae, it is a bacteria and it doesn't cause influenza, okay. So, what is it causing? It is causing middle ear infection, meningitis also it can cause. So, what is it? It is a gram negative bacilli. Gram negative means which color will be used? Pink, right? So, it is a gram negative bacilli, pleomorphic bacillitis, okay. This is the growth on chocolate agar. This is some satellitis. Hemophilus influenzae. Okay. This is a bacteria and it doesn't cause influenza. What does it cause? Um, uh, middle ear infection, meningitis, etc. Moraxella catarhalis. This one is Moraxella catarhalis. It's also gram negative. So, these main organisms you remember. Okay. Now, let us uh, go guys. We are, uh, we have, uh, now the bacteria has reached the middle ear. Right, so middle ear uh, via eustachian tube, all these bacteria have happily reached. Now, let us see once this bacteria that is streptococcus pneumonia we are showing here, once it has reached, now what will happen? Shall we look at? So, first of all, there is tubular, uh, tubal occlusion, guys. The eustachian tube is blocked in this. Only in this pre superation stage, the bacteria is uh, uh, reaching the middle ear. Let us look at this way. Yes, they are saying the bacteria is invading the middle ear. Okay. So, stage of tubal occlusion. So, this is um, where the eustachian tube is getting blocked. Right. And then what is happening? The bacteria is invading the middle ear. That is pre-superation. Then superation. Then uh, if there is a perforation and the pus comes out, resolution. Otherwise, it can go into complication. Let us see. Stage of tubal occlusion, guys, we have reached the first stage. What is the first stage? Tubal occlusion. Here, as such, bacteria, they are not mentioning, only that eustachian tube is getting blocked at the nasopharyngeal end because of some edema, hyperemia. Okay, that will lead to some negative pressure in the tympanic uh, cavity, right? And then that will lead to retraction of the tympanic membrane. The malleus will become more horizontal. There is prominence of the lateral process of the malleus and there is loss of light reflex and there can be conductive deafness, but it is not very marked, they are saying, okay? So, look at what exactly they are saying. The nasopharyngeal end of the eustachian tube gets blocked. Okay. Nasopharyngeal end of eustachian tube is blocked with edema and hyperemia. Now, what happens in this? Uh, because of this, there is some negative pressure here because of which the tympanic membrane is retracted. The malleus is becoming more horizontal. The something is getting prominent. The lateral process of malleus is becoming more prominent. There is loss of that uh, light reflex, I think cone of light, right, guys. And finally, what is happening? These people will have conductive deafness, but it's not very marked. So, we are done with first uh, stage. What is first stage? Tubal occlusion. That is first stage. Now, we will go to the second one. Second one is pre-suppuration. After that comes suppuration. So, pre-suppuration. Okay, here is the stage of pre-suppuration, guys. If uh, this tubal occlusion um, is prolonged, okay, if tubal occlusion is uh, prolonged, what will happen? The pyogenic organisms, they will invade the tympanic cavity. They will cause the uh, hyperemia of its lining, okay, more blood kind of a thing in the lining. Of what? Of the tympanic cavity. Tympanic cavity is nothing but your middle ear, right? So, tympanic cavity is nothing but your middle ear. So, here they are saying it will become, the lining will become hyperemia hyperemia right so here we are pyogenic organisms have invaded the tympanic cavity and they have caused hyperemia of its lining now what will happen this uh, these bacteria all these inflammatory exudates will start appearing in the middle ear. middle ear is full of these exudates now now what will happen to tympanic membrane it becomes congested 
what will be the symptoms of the person this marked ear ache ear pain ear pain ear pain throbbing nature ear pain okay and adults may complain of deafness and tinnitus children may have fever restlessness then signs what will you see as a doctor now you will see that there is congestion of the parts tensa a leash of blood vessels appear along the handle of malleus this is the handle of malleus a leash of blood vessels appear along the handle of malleus and at the periphery of the tympanic membrane imparting it a cartwheel appearance look at this does it look like this guys whole of tympanic membrane including pars placida becomes uniformly red initially it is having cartwheel appearance later it becomes uniformly red looks like tuning fork test what will you see guys you only tell what will you see in tuning fork test fluid in the middle ear yeah conductive deafness very good so we are done with uh, the second stage tube uh, stage of what pre suppuration next is what stage of suppuration very good suppuration what will happen in this so lot of pus is being formed right in the middle ear even mastoid tympanic membrane will start bulging what will be the symptoms ear ache becomes excruciating deafness increases high fever convulsions vomiting what will you see as a doctor tympanic membrane appears red and bulging it has lost its landmarks the tympanic membrane has lost its landmarks right handle of malleus may be engulfed by the swollen or protruding tympanic membrane okay then a yellow spot may be seen on the tympanic membrane where a rupture is imminent it's going to rupture now that part you can see prominently usually that is the pre antibiotic era guys nowadays people come early and they get the treatment right so now uh, all that it should not be that tenderness may be elicited over the mastoid antrum over the mastoid antrum also there will be tenderness so you can press there and check okay how do you press over the antrum where is the antrum somewhere here on this we have to press right from outside so then that there be tenderness there looks like then x ray of mastoids will show clouding air cells because of exudate if you do an x ray by chance then you will see clouding of air cells because of exudate so in x ray this portion should be appearing as having exudate mastoid air cells clouding of air cells so this is suppuration suppuration remember this photo it's bulging 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 the handle of malleus is engulfed it, uh, the tympanic membrane has lost all its landmarks and uh, the so much of pus wherever imminent it is going to uh, rupture and break that point will look yellow all this is usually in the pre antibiotic era that yellow nipple kind of formation from where it is going to burst and come out you can guess right um, then they will have a lot of hearing loss etc next we'll go to here stage of resolution as soon as tympanic membrane ruptures there is a release of pus resolution has started okay all the symptoms also subside inflammatory process begins to resolve so here you have to remember the word is rupture and it's a good thing because it is giving uh, pain relief right what do you think guys shall we put it in green color yeah okay inflammatory process begins to resolve proper treatment if it is started the resolution may start even without rupture so if you give uh, antibiotics and correct treatment then this rupture won't even happen yes the symptoms with the evacuation of pus all the ear ache is gone fever comes down everybody feels better right in life external auditory canal may continue to be blood tinged okay what will you see as a doctor you will see that um, external auditory canal may be blood tinged uh, may, may have the discharge it may have uh, the blood tinged discharge then it can become mucopurulent also if you can see and then you will see a small perforation where you can see here in the antero inferior quadrant of the pars tensa here you are able to see right and tero inferiorly you are able to see a what are you see small perforation then hyperemia of tympanic membrane also subsides okay it will return to normal color and landmarks so resolution over what will happen if uh, uh, resolution is not happening because the organism is so virulent right so the resolution is not taking place and the disease is spreading beyond the confines of the middle ear so from middle ear the cleft everything whatever the mastoid air cells antrum aditus uh, attic everything the uh, eustachian tube believing this beyond it has gone okay where and all it can go acute mastoiditis but mastoid we said it is it can go right sub periosteal abscess under the bone facial paralysis labyrinthitis so inner ear also it reached now inner ear petrocytis extra dural now brain also extra dural then meningitis it went brain abscess lateral sinus thrombosis all this can happen okay this is a stage of complication 
can you say the stage of complication what and all are the complications i yeah, will draw that guy's face again we'll be able to draw his is here what and all we saw mastoiditis petrocytis subperiosteal abscess extradural abscess meningitis brain abscess lateral sinus thrombosis facial paralysis inner ear also it affected right all those are the complications of uh, asom how is it going people very good going well right very good so let us look at the treatment antibacterial what will you give you know the organisms right streptococcus pneumonia h influenza moraxella etc so what will you give antibacterial therapy you will give ampicillin amoxicillin okay then um, if there are people are allergic to these you can give co trimoxazole erythromycin etc so just write this much guys amoxicillin clavulanic acid or ampicillin so as soon as ear pain goes if you discontinue the therapy then or you give inadequate dose that can lead to secretory otitis media you know that is glue ear and also residual hearing loss can happen that's bad right so take your antibiotic therapy completely whatever doctor says do it okay then antibacterial agents and their dosage in acute otitis media the first thing is coming is amoxicillin so they have given some trade names you have to give 40 mg per kg so a person is 60 kg means how much will give 6 40 into 66 4 so 24 is it am i right in saying this yeah divided in three doses they are saying three doses so uh, 3 aids uh, 24 is it so 800 mg so 800 mg you should give this is what you should give 800 mg guys let's write it down here otherwise we'll forget you should give amoxicillin 800 mg 3 times daily 3 times o od means what od is once daily 3 times daily i should give right this is oral am i writing it correct i think it's tid guys So just remember, eight hundred mg, okay, three times daily. But if it is child, then you have to calculate. So just remember, for amoxicillin, you remember the dose, okay? Forty mg per kg per day. Forty mg per kg per day. Okay, in three divided doses. D O S C S. Okay. So then let's move on. Uh, then also with that, what will you give? What are we looking at? ASOM treatment we are looking at, right? Um, decongestant nasal nasal drops, ephedrine you can give. Okay, ephedrine decongestant nasal drops. Why are the nose you can put ephedrine nasal drops? Okay. Otherwise they are telling the uh, oxymetazolin etc. Other than ephedrine, what is the option? Oxymetazolin. That is called as nasivion or xylometazolin or trivin. You can use. Okay. Fine, guys. So ephedrine, oxymetazolin or xylometazolin. These three you can give <coughs> nasal drops for decongestion. Okay. Then you can give oral nasal decongestants like some syrup or what like this. So what is the name here? Sulfa Suda Fed Suda Fed is the trade name looks like the drug is pseudo ephedrine so pseudo ephedrine you have to give okay pseudo ephedrine guys pay attention pseudo ephedrine what are we doing orally we are giving it's a oral nasal decongestant okay then they are giving anti or a combination of decongestant and antihistaminic you can give okay. so nasal drops are very difficult to put in children so they are saying instead of this uh, uh, nasal drops you can try oral nasal decongestant with a combination with antihistaminic okay then coming to analgesics and antipyrectics you can give paracetamol to bring down the fever right people have fever so you will give uh, what will you give guys focus paracetamol okay then uh, what else are we talking about your toilet this is uh, 
they'll clean the external auditory meatus because of uh, all the discharge probably they are cleaning the auditory meatus of all this uh, wax discharge etc if the if there is discharge in the ear it is dry mopped with sterile cotton buds so they are using cotton buds and wick moistened with antibiotic may be inserted this wick is just uh, in the external ear canal they are putting is it otherwise this is not that micro wick i think okay dry local heat helps to re relieve pain dry local heat if you give heat it will relieve pain okay so what did you learn in the treatment guys we learned that we have to give antibiotics like they said um, amoxicillin ampicillin etc if people are allergic to this you can like give cotrimoxazole etc then they gave um, uh, uh, nasal drops so that is ephed uh, ephedrine right then they gave oral nasal decongestant that is pseudo ephedrine am i getting the names correct this is ephedrine this is pseudo ephedrine same thing right ephedrine pseudo then analgesics antipyretics they are giving paracetamol then they are doing ear toilet then local dry heat to relieve the pain then they are doing some myringotomy myringotomy uh, they are incising the ear drum to evacuate the pus when will you do this only when the drum is bulging and there is acute pain the pain pain they are not able to bear right and or there can be incomplete resolution in that case also they are thinking about draining it then despite antibiotics there is incomplete resolution looks like persistent effusion beyond 12 weeks they are treating it as a otitis media with effusion they said right if you are if it's not resolving within 20, 12 weeks you should consider it as a otitis media with effusion that time the indication is myringotomy looks like so the tympanic membrane should become uh, normal till then they are going to follow up and uh, they are going to follow up well when till tympanic membrane returns to its normal and conductive hearing loss also should go away okay yes i remember disorders of middle ear we have looked at uh, acute suppurative otitis media right in that uh, what you saw just now whatever you saw streptococcus pneumonia hemophilus influenza moraxella catarrhal you will treat it with uh, you will treat it with ampicillin amoxicillin acute necrotizing uh, otitis media is that Uh, is you can consider it consider it as a type of acute suppurative otitis media here what will you blame is beta hemolytic uh, streptococcus same streptococcus only you will blame guys but here it is beta hemolytic streptococcus this will cause rapid destruction of tympanic membrane right so, and it can also lead to secondary acquired cholesteatoma so you should be careful with this necrotizing otitis media and according to this um, uh, flow chart otitis acute otitis media you will give antibacterial therapy if, then you will review if it doesn't go then 12 weeks if it persists then you will consider it as a you will consider it as a otitis media with effusion or the glue ear okay this acute um, necrotizing otitis media guys basically how will you treat it how differently this one they will give longer um, antibacterial therapy cortical mastoidectomy also may be indicated if medical treatment fails okay now let us just add one more thing here guys if people are getting repeated attacks of this acute otitis media that is because maybe the bacteria it is sitting elsewhere like in the sinuses of the person right it may be there in they can have hypertrophy of adenoids or they have some infected tonsils or they have allergy or immune deficiency or some velo pharyngeal insufficiency what is that or uh, sometimes uh, what else so basically that can cause recurrent otitis acute otitis media shall we take a recap guys okay in this video we want to look at uh, asom that is acute suppurative otitis media basically it is inflammation acute inflammation of the middle ear here they are talking about the eustachian tube middle ear attic aditus antrum mid mastoid cells everything okay all those can get infected basically it is because of um, bacteria but after a viral infection the bacteria can invade right so that is also possible how does the uh, bacteria reach here via the eustachian tube or via the external ear canal uh, auditory canal if there is a perforation or by a blood but that is very uncommon okay in children the eustachian tube is in such a way that it can allow bacteria very easily okay a uh, predisposing factors are people are having this uh, rhinitis sinusitis nasal allergy tumors in the nose uh, uh, packing of the nose which may also cause uh, all this cleft palate infection of tonsils adenoids right they can have uh, recurrent attacks of common cold 
which may lead to ear infection. The bacteria which affect the people are the Streptococcus, Pneumoniae, Haemophilus, Influenzae, Moraxella, Catarhalis. Main thing you have to remember these three. We have to look at the stages. Stages of tubal occlusion, guys. The eustachian tube gets blocked. What happens when it gets blocked? The uh, tympanic membrane is retracted because of the negative pressure, right? And then the malleus will become more horizontal and the prominence of the lateral paralysis will be there, right? There's loss of right light reflex. This person can have can conductive deafness because the eustachian tube is blocked. Then coming to the stage of presuppuration, the bacteria will invade the middle ear, uh, uh, right? And there's hyperemia of the lining that is inflammatory exudates. The tympanic membrane gets congested. The, the there is earache which is throbbing in nature. There is congestion of the pars tensa. You will see that that there is a cartwheel appearance. Later on, the tympanic membrane, membrane, including everything, will become uniformly red. Then again, here when you do tuning for test, there will be conductive type of hearing loss. Superation. Let's focus. Uh, tympanic membrane starts bulging, right? It can rupture. You can see from which point it may rupture. You, that pro will look yellow, and there may be nipple-like uh, protrusion. Basically, the tympanic membrane has lost all its landmarks. X if you do X-ray, you will see that there is uh, a clouding of air cells. Okay. What else? There is tenderness over the mastoid antrum. I think all this um, you can check, but X-ray is not at all required. What do you say? Then let's move on. After that, <clears throat> it will rupture the tympanic membrane. The pus will come out. All the symptoms will subside. Patient is happy. What do you say? So this is resolution. But what will you see as a doctor? External auditory canal will contain this discharge and all that. Right? Then guys, if there is no resolution and it can go into complication, you saw all the complications. Acute mastoiditis, subperiosteal abscess, facial paralysis, labyrinthitis, petrocytis, extradural abscess, meningitis, brain abscess, lateral sinus thrombophlebitis. Treatment you will normally treat with amoxicillin, ampicillin, remember 40 mg per kg per day in 3 divided doses. Then uh, uh, nasal decongestant uh, drops like ephedrine, then you can give pseudoephedrine oral nasal decongestant along with antihistamine because it's difficult to put nasal decongestant in children. Then you can give paracetamol for relieving pain and temperature, oral toilet to clean it and local dry heat to relieve the pain. Myringotomy, if there is no resolution occurring or if there is acute pain and there is um, incomplete resolution, etc. Uh, just remember that necrotizing otitis media also comes under uh, this uh, type of superative otitis media. There you have to blame beta hemolytic streptococcus. Usually in children who have measles, influenza and all, this can happen. There is rapid destruction of tympanic membrane. So you should start the treatment early and you should give at least 70, 7 to 10 days of treatment. This condition can also lead to a secondary acquired cholesteatoma. So, if a med medical fails, then they will do cortical mastoidectomy. Recurrently, if people are getting uh, otitis media, acute otitis media, they can have sinusitis or some other problem which you will have to look at. If you treat, treat, treat for 12 weeks and nothing is happening with antibacterial therapy, then think of it as an otitis media with effusion, blue ear, and then you give treatment according to that. Okay. That's all for now guys in this video on ASOM acute superative otitis media. Bye bye.